Hello, my friends. Welcome to Lindy's Magpie Reads. Another week of lots of great books. So earlier this week, we had a visit from Joni's mother. Um, and so I just showed a little clip of Joni and her mother, Nikika, playing in the yard. We have had uh, almost spring weather. A few more little spring bulbs are coming up and so I will include photos from the yard at the end of this video. Um, yesterday I went to hear Cherie Demelang speaking at the Canadian Literature Centre giving a lecture about an anthology of monsters, how story saves us from anxiety. If you're not familiar with Cherie Dimmeline, she wrote The Merrill Thieves and then the follow-up to that, which is Hunting by Stars. And she also wrote an adult novel, Empire of Wild. And yeah, it was, it was great going to a live literary event and she had lots of good things to say about storytelling and anxiety. Also this week, I saw a play. It was a world premiere here in Edmonton, written by an Indigenous playwright, a Cree man named Kenneth T. Williams, who lives here in Edmonton. He's from the George Gordon First Nation. And the herd is kind of an indigenous version of Ibsen's An Enemy of the People. So what happens are these twin white bison that are born to a, a herd that belongs to a Saskatchewan First Nation. And the science versus spirituality is part of the big issue in it. Also social media and ownership of genomes. It was, it was pretty cool. Um, at the end of the play, I really thought a lot about the ending. I'm going to get back to endings in a bit. Um, but I also want to mention that one of the actors has cerebral palsy uh, and he was a main character. His name is Dylan Thomas Boucher and he's Cree and Dene from Fort Mackay First Nation in Alberta. I love it that uh, local theater is casting actors that have disabilities and it's not something that's mentioned in the script, um, it just reflects our society. There's all kinds of people here. Yeah. I don't know if this play is going elsewhere, but I would suggest watching for it. So I read, I finished 12 books this week. No bales, but I almost had a bale. We'll get to that. There were three audiobooks, three picture books. I'm not going to talk about the picture books today because I made a separate video about them. Uh, there's that picture this readathon going on. There'll be information linked down below to the video as well. Um, one was a cookbook and I also made a separate video about that which I will link down below. There are two poetry collections, um, one speculative fiction graphic novel, and two of them were books of essays, Two books qualify for the Disability Readathon. Uh, that's something that Erin Holly and Anna G are hosting this month. I'll link the information. And I also read three books by LGBTQ plus authors of color last week. When I finished the Descender series, um, I talked about it in my Friday reads and I said, I wasn't sure about the ending. 
So I've been thinking about endings a lot and what do I expect? Um, what do I want from an ending? So this week, I listened to the audiobook People Love Dead Jews. It's subtitled Reports from a Haunted Present. Present. And it is by Dara Horn. The audiobook is read by Exi Sands. It's a series of essays about contemporary anti-Semitism. Uh, so for example, a museum employee at Anne Frank House was an Orthodox Jew and told that he couldn't wear his skull cap. Um, there is a section about the marketing of the history of Jews in Harbin, China, which is quite shocking. Um, the mythology that Jewish names, family names, were changed at Ellis Island. Um, I had bought into that. Now I know otherwise. But mainly, what I was what I love the most about this book, I, I mean, I love, this is a five-star listen for me. In fact, many sections I listened to twice. Uh, it was, it's really good. But the section about endings and what do readers expect from literature, that really caught my interest. So, Dara Horn says that in Western literature, we expect that the good guys will be saved. Or if that doesn't happen, then the main character will have an epiphany. And if that doesn't happen, then at least the author gives us a moment of grace. And all three of these things are related to Christianity. She says that Literature in Jewish languages, Hebrew and Yiddish, uh, don't have this kind of an ending. Often there's no ending at all. And this reflects uh, their holy books. So, for example, at the end of the Torah, the Israelites don't actually get to the Promised Land. It stops before that. And she gives examples of... Jewish novels that she really likes that don't have an ending as such that we would or what we would think of as an ending. So it all got me thinking so much. Yeah. That's great. I really, really like that audiobook. So I did read the continuation uh, from the Descender series. So the new series that follows up, it starts about 10 years after the end of the Descender. So volume one is the Haunted Galaxy. So this series is Ascender, still by Jeff Lemire, it's still illustrated by Dustin Nguyen, and the art is fantastic. We've got um, the two main characters from Descender had a child and the child's now 10 years old and it's, it seems to be at the center of this. Cats and dog are having a little spat over there. Okay, it's all good. Telsa is back, I'm happy to see that. And so is Bandit, the robot dog. So I am ready to move on to the next volume in this series enjoying it. And last week I talked about a middle grade novel that's on the Lambda Literary Award shortlist, Hazel Bly and the Deep Blue Sea. It's by Ashley Herring Blake. And it didn't really work really well for me. It was okay. Today, or this week, I read a similar book that I enjoyed so much more. It's called A Comb of Wishes and it's by Lisa Stringfellow. The audiobook is read by Bonnie Turpin. 
Lisa Stringfellow is from Barbados, currently living in the U.S. And this novel is about a 12-year-old girl on a fictional island. Uh, but she is grieving her dead mother and there's a blend of contemporary uh, setting with Caribbean uh, folk folklore elements. It grabbed me from the beginning. Um, the mermaid in it is uh, scary and yet quite developed. Um, so the mermaid aspect is, is also what's similar to Hazel Bly in the Deep Blue Sea and the 12 year old grieving death of her mother. Uh, and there is another book that I thought of as I was thinking about these two books. It's one that I read a number of years ago. It's called Keeper. It's by Kathy Appelt. Also about a girl grieving her dead mother and thinking that she's a mermaid in the ocean. So I don't know what it is about girls missing their mother and mermaids, but anyway. The third audiobook that I listened to is the one that I nearly bailed on. It's called Tides by Sarah Freeman and it's read by Amy Rutherford. Her reading was fine. Um, Sarah Freeman is a Canadian writer and this book is eligible for Canada's Giller Prize. And that is the main reason why I stuck with it because this will be my third year of being on the shadow jury for the Giller Prize. And I wanted to at least say that I'd read the whole thing before saying there's no way it should be on the Giller Long List. It should not be on the Giller Long List. I mean, it, I've seen good reviews. Um, there's been comparisons to the writing of Jenny Offal and Rachel Cusk and Sheila Hetty. I like all three of those authors. And as I was reading it, it also reminded me of a novel by Catherine Lacey called Nobody Is Ever Missing. Um, I also was reminded of Winter in Sokchul because it is set in an off-season beach town and how bleak it gets during the winter. But all of those books or authors that it's compared to, I like all of that. Why didn't Sarah Freeman's book work for me? Too flat, I think. Uh, it is about a woman who tries to escape her grief by um, kind of running away from everything. She leaves everything behind and goes to this coastal town, uh, has practically no money. And of course, your grief comes with you. Uh, she has all this self-sabotaging behavior, which annoyed me. Um, there's a romantic relationship, which annoyed me. And um, what is good about it? Definitely an internal journey about coping with grief. Eh. There's plenty of better books on that subject. Okay, into the poetry now. First one, also by a Canadian author, is called Landings, Poems from Iceland. So the author lives in Vernon. Um, his name is Harold Reinich, but he has uh, done writer's residencies in Iceland. I loved the nature writing in the poetry in here. Each poem 
is tied to a place. And what I ended up doing was I'd read the poem and then I'd flip to the back where there's a key to each place, the English explanation of the Icelandic name and just a little story, a few sentences about that place. And then I'd go back to the poem and read it again. And I found that knowing a little bit of background about the place did help. And as I read through these poems, I really felt a strong sense of place, of the, the rocks, the valleys, the mountains, the glaciers, the seashore, um, the vegetation, and the history there. There's a lovely introduction uh, a little bit about the history of Iceland, uh, where people have lived there for uh, 1,100 years since it's been settled. And the Icelandic language is very similar to Old Norse, and English used to be very similar as well. And the, a lot of the language that the poet has chosen are the English words with the roots in Old Norse. So simple, simple words. Um, I'll just give you a few samples. Water drops off the edge of the world, sheds its light, and there, not then, is itself alone. In any other country, the sky's tatters would be declared a hurricane. Here, it is called day. So much wind. Oh, I don't think I would like it in Iceland. <laughs> so much wind. And now I'm getting into the next three books that are all by queer writers of color starting with this collection of poetry. You're the most beautiful thing that happened and it's by Arissa White, who is African American, a lesbian. And what she's done is she's uh, used words from around the world that are derogatory terms for being gay and made poems from them. So I did almost the same thing as I did with Landings, and I read the poem, um, say this one that's titled Auntie, and then I w went to the back to read where the word auntie um, is used. Literal meaning for the derogatory Slovene term tetka, and the French term tata. And then often I would read the poem again. Um, some of these poems are pretty lusty. In this one called Hold Your Part of the Deal. You're thirsty and any old tap won't do. It becomes a joke about how you U-Haul, you and her till dying. And when seasons come and go, Days linked to scents, her cycles, and you learn no tomatoes, extra mayo, always on white. You fall asleep breathing together. You know when balance has changed. Notice different chimes in her laugh. The late night draft through your window. Soon you get cold. She's not caring. She's taking too much cover. So one section is um, about 10 pages long and it is about her cousin Karen who died and as I read this section I found that I was rocking myself because I just felt so sad um, and this is the section where the title comes from actually the final stanza in the poem when they say Karen, you are holy ova, she, she, serenade, potent dap, and dinahara, 
born ship and portal, worshipped lotus, you are liminal wonder, helicon, you are vivicus, cush, fragrant red deep, awoke parade, believe, you are the most beautiful thing that happened. She has a lot of, or the, the narrator in these poems has a lot of different lovers. Kind of made me tired. <laughs> but uh, for you young folk, check it out. Next up, one long essay, kind of a memoirish essay. It's called The Breaks by Julietta Singh. I'm going to pop the picture of the cover in because I just love this display font on the title so much. And I want you to see it up close. Julietta Singh is a Canadian with uh, her mother is white and her father is uh, South Asian and she's writing about her queer family that she's formed with her daughter. She's six years old and this book is written in the, kind of in the form of a letter to her daughter uh, and the, her daughter's biological father, it sounds like he might be asexual although it's not um, it's not, I don't think it's specified in the book, um, but Nathan is in one part of a duplex and Julietta and her daughter are in the other part, so they're co-parenting that way. And Singh is an academic in Richmond, Virginia, and she writes about how she almost feels like Humanity is driving itself off a cliff and it's not worth saving except because she has a daughter. So motherhood is making her want to make an effort. So she's refusing to surrender to capitalism. Now, even though it's a really smart book, very intellectual, I found it easy to read. Uh, it's not aimed at academic readership. It's aimed at general public. There are so many interesting things that she brought up. So for example, seeing a bumper sticker, America conquered, not stolen. Uh, and she discussed that with her students and talked about the white supremacist logic behind that, the word conquered, that conquest implies military force and with it righteousness and proving yourself capable of breaking someone or a people or a region or a nation and maintaining control afterwards. And Singh sees thieving as a more nuanced act. For example, you might do it to sustain yourself or your people. And there's more possibility for um, living an ethical life connected with someone who is a thief. And she says she would choose to be a thief over a conqueror. Me too. Um, this book also could be a part of the disability readathon because when Singh was 13 years old in Manitoba, she, she was riding a stallion that slipped on ice and the horse fell on her and crushed one leg and foot um, and then and the stallion was fine um, but uh, so she's had ongoing problems with that leg and since then has had two emergency neurosurgeries on her spine which are 
probably related to that early accident. So, broken things, yeah. Capitalist society, the body. I do highly recommend this. And what's next? Oh, the cookbook, Flavor Equation. This is by Nick Sharma. He is gay. He uh, moved to the U.S. from India uh, about 20 years ago. And he has uh, married a man, 2015, when it became legal in the U.S. He has so much interesting information about the science of cooking in here that I did a whole separate video. But it, you know, it's stuff like, um, why is it that when you thicken a sauce with a starch um, and then the sauce cools, it weeps, uh, which is also related, you know, the same reason that bread goes stale. Um, and the fact that cornstarch, if you keep it in your pantry for a long time, its uh, thickening power is lessened as time goes on. So there's just cool little bits of information like that. Watch the other video if you want to know more. Um, I made 10 of the recipes and uh, it's quite a great cookbook, just for the cooking, if not for the science. And I had the pleasure of listening to an, a book read out loud to me um, by Sean, the book maniac. He read it to me over Voxer. It's called The White Bathing Hut by the Norwegian author Thorvald Steen. And it was translated by James Anderson. Uh, Thorvald Steen has a type of must muscular dystrophy um, that is the same as the main character in this novel, so it's quite autobiographical. The, the main timeline is a man who is in a wheelchair and just for a few days he is alone um, with various circumstances and he falls, he, he's just lying on the floor thinking about his past and especially his relationship with his mother, very difficult relationship. The whole hereditary illness, family shame, and the way it's tied into the history of eugenics in Norway is all very interesting and I found it quite a moving novel. I recommend it. I'm going to link to a film trailer about the life of this author, Thorvald Steen. It's called The Art of Whistling. I haven't seen the film, but the trailer looks interesting. And last up, three picture books all with a very retro aesthetic in graphic design and I made a separate video about that so I will link to it. And that's it for this Friday Reads. Thanks for sticking with me. Thank you so much for watching. I love to hear from you so please lots of room for comments down below and I will see you all in the next one.